It's me, it's me, it's mmm. That's getting kind of annoying, isn't it? Hey, we're going to do something a little different in this video. We're going over to the workbench, and I'm going to show you what something you can do with all those uh, blue legacy modules gathering dust. Hey everybody, welcome back if you're a subscriber or a return viewer, and just welcome if you're new here. Hey, if you have the legacy system, chances are you got a couple blue modules hanging around, and chances are you've upgraded your system since getting your legacy system, and now these modules are kind of just gathering dust. In this video, we'll show you how to make a blue read-only module into a black writable read module. So you can do system upgrades using the legacy system utility, or you can make multi-engine modules. So let's get to the workbench and let's show you how it's done. Before we get started, I thought this would be a great time to take a look at the various modules we've seen with the legacy system. The TAN modules were basically generic TMCC modules, a steam and a diesel one, came with the early legacy systems. It basically was just to get you up and running as fast as possible. The orange module came with early legacy uh, equipment. I call this the personality module. It basically set up the road name, the road number, whether it was steam, diesel, electric, or what have you. It also um, included any special functionality that engine had or that piece of equipment had into the cab too. Now we just roll over the sensor track with that piece of equipment and uh, it provides all the information to the legacy system. The blue modules were the current software that your legacy system was shipped with and uh, basically just a copy and once you upgrade it, you were pretty much done with these. The black module is a writable module. Now, Lionel enabled us to be able to download the upgrades via the internet, and using the legacy system utility, we were able to make our own modules to do upgrades, and you could also make a multi-engine module. These came with later legacy systems as well, and they uh, took out the, the uh, TAN modules. Now, the blue module, John Zahornacki, former CTO of Lionel and Dr. ZW, kind of gave us the idea that these could be modified to make a black module, which are hard to find and 20 bucks a piece. So uh, some uh, curious folks on the forum figured it out, and I'm going to use the John Will Gunrunner John method. So let's get started. All right. So now that I've cleaned up the workspace a little bit and moved some things around, we're going to take our blue module that we have here and we're going to carefully score it along the glue where it's glued together. Now again, you're going to take your knife and this is probably the hardest thing you got to do and just take your time and work that knife into the edges slowly because again you're working with a razor knife and you can't cut yourself and I'm just gonna keep on scoring the seam both sides now the ones I've done before it seems like the majority of the glue that holds them together is probably midway between This one's already uh, coming open pretty well. Get on the end and get a little pressure there. And I won't bore you with with uh, doing the entire opening, but um, I do want to see, I've just uh, got into the seam pretty good there. So uh, this will go a little bit quicker on this side. 
but you don't want to go too far in with the razor knife either because you don't want to damage the circuit board. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and work with this. And if we have to, we can speed up the video. Okay, I think we're really close. There we go. All right. There we go. Okay, so it's pulling apart. Not 100% perfect, but not bad. So, there we go. So now, this really only goes in one way, but I would still kind of keep note that the chips face the side with the Lionel logo on it. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but on the right-hand side, there's a little resistor. And on the left-hand side, in between here, there's a little resistor there, and there's no resistor there, just a pad. And I'm going to take up some uh, close-up pictures. So what we got there is we'll remove that, just heat it up and get rid of it. And we'll take a little piece of wire and jump for that position. So I'm going to turn on the solder iron and uh, we'll start getting that ready. Okay, I think the solder iron is just about heated up. And again, I'll probably get in the way, but... There's a little resistor right at the tip of my solder iron. And I'm just going to heat that up. Now normally, I mean, there's guys that have the, the surface mount solder irons. Uh, if I was actually soldering this component on, I'd probably uh, use a better solder iron. But since we're just heating it off to, to pick it off, I don't think we need to worry about that. Successfully remove that guy. I'm gonna check it out. Yep, the pad is clear. So now I'm gonna take this piece of wire and I'm gonna tin it. Get it nice and uh now this is just a piece of phone wire, solid foam wire. We're only going to tack this right in the pad next to it. Matter of fact, what I may do is just bend this a bit. Just with enough that I need on there. And then it'll be easier to cut the remainder off. This is not a bigger the blob, better the job kind of thing. God, if I couldn't, sh if I could stop shaking, I'd be good. I think I got it. Yep. And then I'm going to cut off the extra. And it's probably not my best solder job. All right. So I don't know if you can see that. Put a little jumper right there so that, uh, and we took the resistor off the other side. So now that the jumper's on, before we go ahead and seal this all up, we are going to test it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the base and uh, we'll see how she does. Okay, so I carefully inserted the module into my base and uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can. Uh, right to it and if we can we're successful we'll uh, glue it back together and relabel it all right now that we got the module into the base and we haven't closed it up yet let's open up the legacy system utility base is connected and we're going to make a cab module Get the cab 1.72 software and we have progress it sees the module it's writing to the module 
So once we're done, we'll uh, test it on my cab two, make sure it uh, wrote properly and make sure it reads properly. And once we're done with that, we'll glue it back together. So this process probably takes uh, about another minute. So um, we'll probably speed through this uh, for the sake of time. I don't want to make a super long video on this. I took enough time trying to get the module open. So uh... we're at 95 percent. In a minute should tell us it's successful and then we'll uh, give it a shot and see how it works. Module successful, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'll go ahead and retrieve the module. And we'll try to update my cab 2. Okay, so I carefully inserted the module into the uh, cab 2 because we still don't have the cover glued onto it. Uh, I'm going to hold the set button down. I'm going to turn it on, and if all goes well, the red light will flash. Take about 30 seconds to a minute, and we should come up, and it should uh, be 1.72. There we go. I don't know if you can see the LED is flashing. And complete. Comes on. 1.72 version. I don't know if you can see that, but so we have successfully created a writable module in the way of a blue module by using the technique that, um, like I said, I don't know who came up with it. I know Gunrunner John did a pretty nice uh, uh, photo uh, tutorial of it on the O gauge rail roading uh, website but um, again we popped off a zero ohm resistor on one side between these two chips and soldered a jumper on the other side so now all that's left is to do something that I'm not a fan of is working with glue Get a clamp clamp it together and now we wait and uh, we'll wet, let the glue dry. I'll have to get the rest of the uh, sticker off there from the old version. And uh, like I said, I may to try to do a, a B160 and a C1.72 rather than spelling out cab and uh, base. And uh, then we'll have two two modules because I've already done one previously so I did this one for the video and uh, then we'll have a cab and a base module that uh, can be used to write and uh, read software so again you can make these into a system module which is what we're doing here and we can also make them into a multi-engine module which lets you store all your engines from your cab into that so I'm going to let that glue and dry, and when it's done drying, we'll go ahead and label these up. Okay, it's been a few days since I glued this module together, so it's uh, it, it's pretty much uh, there. If you want, you can kind of knock some of the glue that might have swelled up around it out of the way. Looking good. And now... If you want, you can uh, paint it black or use a Sharpie or something just to blacken it up. So it just sets it aside from being just a regular blue module. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and blacken it, and then we'll go ahead and label it. I think that's probably pretty good, and we'll just go ahead and blacken it up, and then we'll uh, wrap this video up. All right. So we successfully took one of these older blue modules, we cut it apart, we removed the zero ohm resistor from the one pad, 
and then we put a small jumper across the other pad. We tested it, glued the module back together. Now, like I said, I took some Sharpie to these two. That one I didn't do the uh, Line L logo, this one I did, and uh, made them black modules. So now they're writable and readable modules. I put the, the most current software on them, C170, C C1.72 for the cab, B1.60 for the base. And now I have two writable, readable modules. And uh, I'm gonna take that again away. These are basically acting as a black module. So not only can you put the new software on it from Lionel for your base in cab two, but you can also make a multi-engine module, which is something I'm gonna probably cover up, cover uh, real soon here because I really don't remember seeing anybody cover that. And that's a very useful tool to have. So um, let's get ready to wrap this video up. I hope you uh, learned something. Again, the hardest part about this is probably getting this module open and uh, takes a little bit of time, takes some patience, but you'll definitely uh, be rewarded. Uh, saves you a couple bucks not having to buy a black module and uh, takes, takes a blue module that no longer has any usefulness and makes it useful again. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. So I hope you find this video helpful and interesting. With about a half hour of time and a little bit of soldering, desoldering, you can now make yourself some writable, readable memory modules out of the blue ones you probably have laying around gathering dust. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you click the like button. If you're not a subscriber, we'd love to have you. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much. And finally, please leave a comment. I love seeing them, I love reading them, and I try to reply to every one of them. So until next time, happy railroading.